Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies. Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. With stories from your favorite Star Wars movies, television shows, and comics, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening now wherever audiobooks are sold. This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to, well, it's Coffee with Kenobi, of course. I am your host, Dan Z, drinking One Nation coffee out of my Disney Parks travel mug that my brother brought back when he went to Disney World about a month ago. Um, keeps the coffee hot. The conversation is going to be hot and enticing. I don't know why it would be hot, but uh, let's speaking of hot, let's bring in our co-host today, Tom Gross. <laughs> well, good day to you. It's good to be here. And hey, I'm drinking out of my Disney uh, Cruise Line mug today. Oh, good. So One Nation Coffee is in that today. I love so, it. Yeah. so yeah. That's good. So it's good to be on with you. This is show number 330. Of course, this is Ooh. our third daily show, the the second that we're actually officially recording as a daily show. And I put out on Twitter, I put out a little poll, which of the new daily show be called CWK Daily, CWK mm. Today, or Daily CWK? Which one do you think it should be? Uh, what was the second one? I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, it's okay. It's the first three R's. CWK Daily, CWK Today, or Daily CWK. Today is the one I chose. Yep, me too. And it's winning 58.3%. Oh, look at that. that. Welcome to CWK Today. Now, people are asking me, how long are you doing this for? I said, well, I guess it depends on how long I'll be teaching from home. Right. But I will say it's fun. It's a nice, uh, good, positive outlet, and I get to talk to my friends about Star Wars every day, which uh, is something that I love doing. It is fun. I enjoy uh, that as well. And hey, if any time we get to, I mean, you and I kind of get CWK today every day anyway, yeah, because we see each other at work and uh, usually chat some Star Wars and as well as other things. But, uh, but this is great to be able to share this conversation with um, everyone. Oh, I, I agree. I'm glad. So today we're going to review the episode Unfinished Business. We're hot mm-hmm. on the heels of the brand new one coming out. Uh, so today we're looking at Unfinished Business. Uh, the opening uh, fortune cookie says, trust placed in another is trust earned. Uh, I, tell me about that. I love that uh, because it, it to me it has uh, a dual meaning. Um, of course, it's very focused on this uh, this episode because they have to. We got that sort of eye glint at the end of episode three, where we weren't sure whether Echo was someone that could be trusted or not, and uh, at least that's what I got from that uh, look. That he, I don't know, he just sort of gave that faraway look. But uh, yeah. but so here we have to. You know, he says he steps up. I would like to have an opportunity to take. Uh, to bring the Republic of victory instead of a defeat. And if, what I think is interesting is that the Bad Batch is who we um, is who questions him the most in this episode. Um, but I think the double meaning to it, and you could either confirm or deny this uh, or your thoughts on this, I think this is a nice uh, wrap-up for the whole four-season or four-episode uh, uh, story arc because – a lot of trust had to be placed in Bad Batch to start this whole thing off. And yeah. they, have done, they have done nothing but prove their efficiency and their willingness to fight alongside the regs and, um, for the same goal. I love it. No, it's true. And it's, it's about reciprocity, right? If you're trusting other people, mm-hmm. um, if you're showing you're going to trust them, then they're going to trust you in return. It's wise. It's great. Um, and it, it's on display right away because... There's concern about Echo and his loyalty. Uh, when they're trying to make a plan to liberate an axis, Echo ultimately says, uh, you know, I've got a plan. Uh, you know, I, I've been trying to work for the, I've been working for the separatists against my will for a while, but now this plan is to help out. I think the most interesting thing about this is that Mace Windu is the yes. one who's the advocate for Echo. Uh, and we know, of course, the history of Mace and Anakin. I mean, I guess there's a lot different. So, like, Echo's the chosen one or anything. But what do you think about that? 
Yeah, I found that to be uh, interesting as well. I thought, actually, I thought Mace Windu had a lot of important aspects uh, to this episode. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I appreciated his his willingness to at least hear. He says something along the lines of, if, the, if he's got a plan, I'd, I'd like to hear it. Um, because clearly what they've been doing on an axis has not been working. It's all been a fail to this point. He starts the episode out uh, with conversation with Kenobi saying, um, you know, Hey, we've, we've got all of these fronts on an axis and we're losing almost every one of them. So I think as a, as a mo- I don't know whether it's a moment of desperation or a moment of trust and maybe a little bit of both. Uh, Mice window is willing to hear his plan and, they they do that quick take to Obi Wan Kenobi. He gives the affirmative nod, and and we get the we get the mission. I also think it's important to note that um, in most of the Clone Wars, May seems the most centered in chaos. I think. I mean, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But before we get to that, yeah, I, I think it's cool that the Bad Batch is not so certain if they trust him either. Mm-hmm. So they kind of do it with a weary eye and they kind of one eye on him, one eye on the mission at hand. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, record just wants to blow stuff up. So it is unfortunate that this is the last episode. As far as I know, where we're going to see the Bad Batch. Um, yeah. I don't know about you, but have you thought about what happens with them in Order 66? We talked about that. Oh, before? I feel like we did. Many, I, we might have, but um, and I, I don't know if it was here that we talked about it or just. Uh, in passing, but you know what I wonder is because they are mutated uh, clones. I wonder if they've got the chip in their head, and so what happens to them? Um, I I would not want to be the Jedi that's near them, but it no. doesn't sound like most of their missions outside of what we've seen in this four part episode. It does not seem like most of their missions involve a Jedi. So yeah, so I do I do wonder on Order sixty six what does happen to them, and maybe we'll see. I, I, I think I'm with you. I doubt. I doubt it. I, I wondered uh, around episode two, one and two, what would whether we'd see something. But I'm kind of thinking that uh, that this will be it. What I'm trying to remember is: Does Echo have the chip currently that we know of? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. I can't. I can't remember either. Um, but uh, but yeah. I so. So yeah, I, I think I think they would be quite a dangerous uh, one group to face if if they are in the proximity of a Jedi or a group of Jedi. Um, I would not want to be the one to face them. And then I would be more sad too because I mean, if it's a clone that you don't really know and you haven't spent any time with, mm-hmm. I mean, you know the Jedi may have, so that's unfortunate or it's sad. But but if it's someone like these guys, it would be really heartbreaking because they're just so they're just so darn fun. Um, so they're heading, we're heading over to an axis to start this whole thing. And I thought it was cool when they show Trench's base and that, that giant basically sphere. And when yeah. they pan out with the camera, it looks like a spider or a spider web. Did you notice that? Oh, <laughs> I did not. I did not make that connection, but I do uh, love that image. Um, I can see it in my head, what it looks like. And yeah, I see where you get that. That's cool. It's Good super cool, and, and there's wonderful, there's beautiful music in this in that sequence, but especially in the entire episode at the end, there's um, some music from basically from uh, Attack of the Clones mm. uh, and Geonosis, essentially, and, and which are, there are certainly echoes of that. Let's get to the, the the to the moment for well, no, there are two moments in this episode that are incredibly powerful. One is comical and and exciting, and one is just downright scary. So the one that's um, the first one is when Mace Windu and Obi Wan land, and as they drop from so far up in the air because they're Jedi, they just land gracefully. And then Mace Windu has Tom one of the great speeches you'll <laughs> hear in the entirety of the Clone Wars. <laughs> in essence, you know, he introduces himself. Uh, you know, I've defeated over a hundred thousand battle droids. Why don't you just um, why don't we reprogram you instead of just basically wasting what you're doing? And of course. Yeah. Blast him! So they <laughs> blast at him, <laughs> and it's just great. Tell me about that moment for you. Yeah, I thought that was great, and it did make me. It made me wonder how many times we've seen uh, Mace Windu in in battle, and wonder if he do, if this is something he often does, um, or if if he's just taken by the moment um, and uh, gives them the chance. But 
it was pretty, it was pretty great. And I definitely, um, took notice when that happened because you're expecting just they they zip down those lines and you just expect the, the the blaster fire to go and for some odd reason the droids entertained his his speech and uh and i love how the yeah. the, the battle droid commander kind of looks off to the side <laughs> as if to see is anyone else paying attention to this and yeah. then it blast them and so that was great and then obi-wan kenobi well it was worth a try <laughs> right so someone had <laughs> asked me online or in person, "Hey, uh, do you, why is he doing this?" Yeah. Uh, oh no, it was, it was on it was on our thread on our CWK Cafe in our awesome okay. Facebook group. And my response was, "This is a directive." To me, that means that the Jedi are peacekeepers, right? They're not they're not warriors. Although the Clone Wars obviously throws that out the window. So, in my opinion, he legitimately is following through with his mandate. You know, offer a peaceful solution. Well, in the back of your mind, knowing full well that's not going to work with droids that are programmed to kill Jedi. But he does it anyway. And, and so the question is, do you think he relishes um, this moment and the action? Um, does he kind of like the cowboy aspect of this or is, or is, he, is he really deluded? I mean, what do you think? Um, well, I did take a look at, cause I, you know, trying to figure out the purpose of that, if there was something more to it, I, I was, um, I went back and reviewed that, that section of the battle and, and my thought was, okay, does he spend his time in this battle standing back, defending himself? You know, oftentimes the Jedi will stand back or they'll lead the group and they'll defend the clones behind them by deflecting, uh, blaster bolts. And so I thought, does he does he wade into battle, and does he actually, you know, engage in me- melee combat with them and with the droids, and, and cut them in pieces and things like that? And um, and yes, he does. Um, he and both oh, he and Obi Wan do engage directly with the battle droids, and they don't stand back and defend. So I think I, I believe I, I agree with you. It, it's it's a mandate that he does. Now, whether every Jedi does that, or whether we've seen this before necessarily. Um, I, you know, I, I don't recall and I don't believe so. Um, so I think, I do think he, he, I don't know. I just, I think about what I know about him from the books that I've read. He likes the battle. He's, Mm -hmm. he's your battle master, uh, Jedi. Yeah. Um, and so I think he relishes this and enjoys the battle, but again, I'm with you on, this this is just something he he needs to do as a Jedi and and hey if the droids lay down their weapons all the better right exactly and, and I think he'd be fine with that but he's not he has no problem kind of throwing his Jedi weight around no which is you know interesting and, and full disclosure I I when the, when he came down and he started this I said to Mason I said oh my gosh this is going to be like the old Clone Wars like the Tartakovsky episode where he takes on an entire uh, battle droid battalion. And it totally reminded me of that. So I think that was sort of a nod to that, at least in my yeah. mind. That's cool. But then we get to the actual escape portion where we find Echo and Anakin and, and Rex trying to, they're trying to make a fake battle plan to fool Admiral Trench. Uh, and Anakin trusts Echo just from the get go. And I, when my thought is, why? Uh, in fact, now, there's a sequence at the end where they share the plane with Mace, and he seems to think that Mace will trust um, Echo over Anakin. Did you? I thought that was kind of fascinating as well. Hmm. I, yeah, I didn't. I never felt like Anakin did not trust him. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I, mean, I, really, I wonder if <clears throat> because he sort of sees inside of him um, that he's been through a lot, that he's been through trauma. In essence, he was a slave. So. Mm-hmm. Anakin's going to be empathetic to that because he was one and of course his mother too. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, And Anakin does put a lot of trust in, in the clones, you know, and so this is Rex's friend. He was on the mission to rescue him. And so, you know, maybe there's a little bit of that that goes into it that, uh, that he feels, I don't know, just inside that this is someone we can trust. Um, but I don't know. I and I, I like the idea and the thought that that he empathizes with him as being enslaved and uh, forced to do something beyond his will. Um, and so he puts that trust in him from that from that angle. Yeah, good yeah. point. I, I hadn't really thought about that. The, any other standouts about that before we get to um, the second half of this episode? 
Well, I guess what I would say is one thing that stood out to me, and we've we've addressed it a little bit. Maybe we're going to come back to it uh, again, and so if so, just mention it. We'll we'll move on. But um, I, I go back to the Bad Batches um, doubt in um, in Echo Echo's intentions, and when Echo is plugging in, and he's and he says he's going to send the message. Tech immediately is on top of it. There's my my guy Tech, and and uh, I think the poll showed that he's he's one of the favorites. Yeah. Um, Tech says no, you can't send that yet because it will it will they will know that that transmission is being sent from here. And so I think if he hadn't had that distrust, the the mission might have been in jeopardy from the start. And so in this case, maybe the mistrust helped out with the mission, um, and. Uh, and so I that that just that moment right there uh, struck me, and then they also question him when he sends the the battalion of battle droids into the uh, the area where Obi Wan and uh, Mace are, and he says, "How do we know that we can trust you on this?" And he says, "You can just trust me." Yeah, which is very cool. the The clones, uh, I've said this many times. A lot of people have Clone Wars animated series just makes you care about these characters and it's pretty oh. clear i mean dave filoni says in the in the clone wars what is it called clone wars download yeah mm-hmm. he says at the end you know clone wars is about the clone wars uh and rex it's about the clones it's about ahsoka and rex right yes i mean that yeah that's what to him the entire story is about so we get to see that um let's go ahead and take a break when we come back we're going to talk about an incredibly powerful moment, of course, with the Jedi, but more importantly, with Anakin Skywalker. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books, but can't find the time? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects, top-notch narrators, and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From Rey, Finn, and Kylo Ren to Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, you'll recognize all of your favorite characters from the Star Wars galaxy. Listen to the newest books in the Star Wars universe, like The Rise of Skywalker Expanded Edition by Ray Carson, featuring new content you didn't see in theaters. Looking for something your kids can listen to? Try Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, a junior novel, by Michael Koji. With Star Wars audiobooks, you'll have plenty of Star Wars listening to keep you entertained. Available wherever audiobooks are sold. We're back and we find out, Tom, in the second half of this episode, Unfinished Business, that Anakin's got a plan. Uh, he tells Mace about it and then Mace is skeptical, but Open one says, if I know Anakin, we've got the easy <laughs> part. <laughs> Which is pretty fun. I mean, you know, Obi Wan loves Anakin, um, and they've moved a long way in their relationship. Whereas to now, instead of him being frustrated, rolling his eyes, he just says, "You know what? Anakin's a cowboy. He's cavalier." And you'd think that that Mace would appreciate that, but maybe Mace feels somewhat threatened by that, or you know, maybe he likes to be the top dog. Now I'm just sort of posting my own thoughts. There's no real evidence to support that. No, I'm glad you said that because I've always felt that way too about Mace and uh, and Anakin, and I've never, I guess I've never thought of it in the terms of that he's threatened by him. I just, I don't know. I've I've always felt like uh, Mace Windu it's an alpha thing didn't have. Oh yeah, I guess I could be. I guess I I always thought it as as just distrust. They never trust. You know, they didn't want him to be trained from the start. From when. Uh, Qui Gon Jinn brought him in, and uh, and so Yoda is always I felt like came around to um, appreciating what Anakin had and 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 the, the passion inside of him. But I never felt like Mace Windu was ever on board necessarily with Anakin. So, right. uh, so and I I kind of felt that in this in this episode um, wasn't glaring, but definitely there's little no um, subtext. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, d- you know, one of my one of the lines that that was not in this that I, I even the second time I saw this I expected Obi Wan to say it and I think we're at that moment. It's when they when when they actually Mace and uh, Mace Kenobi and the clones uh, kind of wrap up and in that area, 
And uh, Obi-Wan says, well, that wasn't as difficult as I expected. And then all of the doors start opening and the, the, the troop, the yeah. metal droid troops start coming back in. Mm-hmm. I thought for sure we were going to get a, well, I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, <laughs> totally that cool. expecting that. But yeah. instead we get um, May saying something along the lines, does this meet your expectations? And Obi-Wan says, actually, this exceeds my expectations. Yeah. What, what did you think about that line? I love it. I thought it was charming. And I, and I thought it shows that they're both calm and cool under pressure. Um, they both have, uh, they're both are okay with the thrill of, of it uh, to a degree. And they're prepared and centered. I mean, they're Jedi. These are two of the top Jedi, you know, in the history of the galaxy. And I just thought it was a, a nice moment of levity um, in a sequence that could very well be the end of all, both of them. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah. Well, like I said, I was expecting a different line there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when uh, when that came, um, and that was now, what was was the line about? Anakin probably has the worst of this deal. Was that before this happened, or right after this happened? It I, was I right before it. Right before okay. it. When, when they found out, look, uh, you're going to get a lot more battle droids today your way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, it and, happens. Yeah. Yeah. They did, and uh, and so definitely, I. I I really like you've said this a couple times and and I've kind of lost focus of this. Um and I have to be honest with you. I just I've read two stories here recently that take place after Return of the Jedi and that is um uh one of the Galaxy's Edge books and then um uh The Crash of Fates and then I just finished reading um Force Collector. And in there the general population has this negative connotation of what the Jedi were. Clearly, Palpatine's propaganda in the Empire and his his propaganda of why Order 66 happened has taken hold in the galaxy. And people do not have this trust of the Jedi, and they do not see them as the... Um, the uh the, the the keepers of the peace in the in the galaxy. And so you said twice now that that Obi-Wan and, and uh, Mace Windu have this like centered, this, uh, this peace, this calm, this um, I've got this kind of moment. And I, I'm, I appreciate you saying that because in the context of where I am in my brain with wh- what the Jedi were and who they were, and maybe I've even been taken <laughs> by the propaganda, that it's nice to sort of get this refresh of, you know, the Jedi had flaws and we know what those flaws flaws are, but in their hearts, they they did believe what they were doing was right. Oh, I think so too. That's actually very well said. I I, I think the again the the brilliance of Palpatine is how he's able to change a galaxy wide opinion uh, through time, through yeah. changing history, through um, taking away power and knowledge. I mean, it's what all the all the most, uh, unfortunately, most impactful dictators have done in real history. Yeah, right. Interesting. So the second half of this is about um, bombs and defusing these bombs. Um, it kind of sets off a bomb inside Anakin Skywalker as well. Yes. But I will say that I really like that for, for Mace Windu to uh, use the code to deactivate the bomb, he has to use the force to activate basically a mixing board. Did you notice that? <laughs> Yeah, I did. I thought that was cool. It's a podcast where I was very entertained by that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No, I thought I loved that moment. Um, one of my shield. one of my favorite moments of this, where you know he realizes the ray shield is there, and I was like, oh, so how is this going to work out? And duh, he uses the force. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was so cool. One of my favorite moments of of using the force. It was genius. It was so much fun. Um, so he's using the force and he's, he's getting the code and then eventually, uh, trench doesn't want to play and, um, uh, Anakin confronts him and Anakin completely changes. We've seen hints of anger, uh, periodically throughout the last couple of seasons of the clone wars. And we're very close to revenge of the Sith here. Uh, but in order to intimidate, which by the way, a Jedi wouldn't do, right. uh, he cuts off a couple, he says, I don't have such weaknesses. Now let's try that again. And he cuts off a couple of Trench's spider arms. Yes. To which frightens Trench. And it kind of took my breath away a little bit too. Absolutely. And, um, 
this is the second time in this four episode arc that we've seen Trench with this like shock of, uh, you know, he he is a he is a creature that is in control 100 percent of the time and when he realizes in I, I now i don't remember episode one or two when they when they receive the transmission of echo and he's a like, what and then here with anakin a jedi wouldn't do that and here anakin does i think it definitely sets up and i think i said this uh to you immediately after seeing this um it definitely sets up what happens in Revenge of the, uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith um, at the, in the opening sequence. Um, we, yeah, oh yeah. If if we had seen this before that, there wouldn't have been any question in no. my mind mm-hmm. that that he would have done to Dooku what he did to Dooku. And mm-hmm. so, uh, so it, as we rewind a little bit, it was just as shocking what he does to Trench. But then, right after it happened, I thought, oh we knew we knew that this was coming and that these behaviors in Anakin were going to be there. And I feel like this is the second time in this four, four story arc that we've seen Anakin's nonverbal facial expressions change to where he's hateful instead of at peace. And Oh, very much. And, and even with all the other things going on, it's still jarring because, you know, through much of this arc, he has been the nice Anakin, the empathetic Anakin, the the caring Anakin who cares about the clones, mm-hmm. who cares about the galaxy, who who actually wants good. But with Trench, he's different. So uh, I was thinking a lot about this and why. I mean, when he does behead Dooku, he, he does feel some remorse right away. He was cajoled by Emperor to do it. But he doesn't feel any remorse when this happens. He almost shows a little bit of mirth and menace at the exact same time. Because eventually, when uh, Trench tries an escape, Anakin literally pierces him through the heart. He doesn't try to disarm him. He doesn't try to use the Force to restrain him. He flat out murders him. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's like, oh. And, and Mason kept talking to me about, Daddy, why did he do that? I said, well, he's going to be a bad guy. And he kept saying, no, that's like Darth Vader. I said, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a theory about why that was easy for him to do to Trench. What do you think? Um, in comparison to his in remorse. In comparison to Duke. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, well, I, I believe that um, Trench is below Anakin, um, whereas Dooku is more of a peer. And, um, and so I think it's easier to do it to Trench because, because of all that. And actually, Anakin has history with Trench, if you go clear back to, is it one of the first episodes? Cat and Mouse. Um, it's the first one on the timeline. Yes, and um, and so Look we know that, that they, that you were you were on top of that. Um, I always remember that episode because of the ship that he and I always forget the name of it, but the ship that he that has the cloaking uh, device mm-hmm. ends up. It's it's throughout the it's throughout a long that that ship exists through a long time period, clear to aftermath. Um, but uh, anyway, the, uh, the point being, I, and I think that's it. I think that he just maybe it's a little bit of the history, but I don't think I don't think Anakin sees him as a, as an equal. He sees him probably down in the ranks of uh, maybe even battle droids, and so he's just another separatist bad guy. Um, whereas Dooku is a Sith. He's a Force user. He's potentially a peer of Anakin, and so when he does that. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of background knowledge that he has about who Dooku is. Um, so that's that's where that's what I take from it. I'm, I'm curious to hear what your your thoughts are. Well, that ship's called the Invincible, by the way. The what? The trench. The trench has in the cat and mouse episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, to me, and I like weird, the idea of peers is interesting. I think that's cool. Because Dooku was a Jedi trench, trench. Uh, the main difference between trench and Dooku is that trench is not a humanoid. I mean, I guess he's humanoid, but he's not human. He's an alien. Oh, yeah. And Anakin, to me, to my way of thinking, is not. He doesn't. That's not his. Um, he's. I'm not going to say he's racist, but he's definitely got some major prejudices towards alien species. And all you need to think about is Attack of the Clones and the Tusken Raiders. Mm-hmm. And how they killed his mom. Now, Trench isn't a Tuscan, obviously. Couldn't be further from a Tuscan. But he is still an alien species. 
It was still tried to show some cruelty to to people, and Anakin has no patience for that. Um, a emperor is is really, and the emperor's a bigot. Let's be honest; he doesn't like people who aren't human. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in aftermath and in, in some of the literature that shows that um, he was very anti alien, right? So, yes. so that so there's not a trickle down yet necessarily because they don't work together as closely as they're about to. But I do think there's that that bias that that it's easier for him because trench isn't human what do you think well i think there's a lot of validity to that um yeah i i mean you even think about his slaver Watto was not right. human he was alien and i'm just trying to like replay all the moments of where we see a lot of hate in anakin early on mm-hmm. um the tuscan raiders is isn't obvious um Huh. Interesting. Well, and then the, the Geonosians. Yeah. Just overall. I mean, he has no qualms about them and the, and the uh, whole separatist alliance when he murders that whole crew. He's got no patience. Um, He's got no <laughs> patience at this point and his friends and his life is in danger. And instead of trying to convince him or persuade him or even using a Jedi mind trick right, right away, you yeah. know, just boom, stabs him. Then he runs off. And then, you know, a few seconds later he's with the clones and he's all happy. Uh, and joking, and then we get into this wonderful section where Wrecker and Crosshair try to outdo each other. Now, Wrecker and Crosshair we both like, but our favorites um, are the other two members of the Bad Batch. But I got to tell you, man, this was great fun. And and I, as much as fun as it was for Wrecker to do his thing, what Crosshair did and the way he set that up, to me, that was just brilliance. Oh, it was. Are you talking about the the trigger? Oh, Yeah. And when yeah. he throws those little mirrors on the sides, those like magnet mirrors. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was great. And we were, I was trying to figure out what, like what he was, I thought he was laying down bombs, but yeah. they had teased, they had teased this, this uh, little trick earlier in the episode where he did sort of a single shot that ricocheted. And so as he, as he went through there dropping those, uh, I watched it with with uh, Kaylee, and she's like, "What is he doing?" And I said, "Well, I think he's laying down bombs." And she goes, "Oh!" And then, and then, like somewhere right before he made the shot, I said, "No, those are reflectors. Watch!" <laughs> and then, boom, choo, 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 all the way down the hallway. That was great. That was fantastic. It was so, so fun and so in novel. A, yeah, and very different from Anakin's uh, execution or trench earlier. Um, Wrecker has been wanting since the beginning of this episode to blow things up. And he, when he gets the, the detonator from Anakin, he says, this is the happiest day of my life. <laughs> I thought of David Modder said, I know how much he loves Wrecker. So that had to be a highlight for you, David. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, all the foreshadowing, I mean, what, two, three times he yeah. says, Oh, I just wanted to blow it up. Or, you know, I mean, when they're going up to the dreadnought, he says twice, I think at least, that he just wants to, and Anakin, no wrecker. We need to do this quietly. You're going to have to just behave yourself. And then here he gets his he gets his redemption and gets to blow the stinking thing up. And Tech even said, "You know, I have a feeling you're going to get your chance." And he, he did. did. He, he did. did absolutely. There, there's this this wonderful moment at the end of this thing hmm. where Echo, everyone is back on the planet and. Oh. Um, he's going, basically they, the Jedi thank them, talk to them for a little bit. And then Echo has this moment where he says goodbye to the Bad Batch. And I just got a, a feeling before it even happened, oh my gosh, he's going to join them. Yeah. And I, and I hadn't thought about like, it until that moment. And I thought this really couldn't be more perfect. And he actually does. And there's this gorgeous moment where, um, they all salute Rex at the end. And there's this. There's no more regs or bad bats. There's equality and brotherhood. And I just thought that was an absolutely gorgeous moment. It really was. And I like the uh, the superior officer in Rex giving permission to Echo. You, if this is what you think you need to do, you should do this. It's good. I give you permission, uh, basically. And which I thought was was really to me that was really moving because this whole story arc has been Rex's passion for first realizing that Echo 
may still be alive. There's the moment where he's sitting on his bunk looking at the picture of the four of them. And and here he he sets him free. He lets him go. He realizes that, hey, I've I've done what I what I needed to do, but Echo is not, you know, Echo is not the same person he was when when I knew him back on the Citadel and before. And so he realizes that his place is with the Bad Batch. He's he's now almost as much machine as he is a, a man or a clone. And so he, he fits better with, with them than with us. And, and I think I, I, I wish we could get another story of the Bad Batch with Echo because I'd love to see T- Echo and uh, Trench work together. Oh my Not God. Trench. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tech. Tech is who I meant. Yeah. Echo and Tech work together. Oh, they, like a, you want to talk about it, an unbeatable duo. I know. It's fair to say this was, a, this was an, an excellent arc. I mean, the first couple, I, I, I love the first episode. Two and three were more kind of set up in action, and I thought, okay. But then four really tied it all together, and that Anakin moment is just an incredibly key moment in his, his uh, rapidly descending transformation into Darth Vader. It was, it was unexpected and powerful and, and really made for some great storytelling. So again, I seem to keep, I mean, I'm a teacher and I keep forgetting my rule of grading this thing and giving oh. it an overall reflection. So we're at the end of this thing. So tell me what your grade is. I got to put this at the top of the outlines. Put a grade. Uh, well, I, okay. So I, I have to confess, I, it's time for me to eat a little crow because oh. I've been saying, I've been saying to some of our uh, close friends, mainly, uh, well, our friend Caleb uh, mm-hmm. that we work with, sure. that I, I I said they're better I, in, in round round episode two and three. I said to him, there better be something big in episode four because this is one third of the final season, yeah. and and I know nothing more about Maul. I know nothing more about Ahsoka. I really don't know. And I haven't seen any major progression in the war per se. And I said, there better be something big. And there, okay. So I'm going to say this, but then I'm going to explain. There wasn't anything big, flashy, nothing Ahsoka, nothing, uh, mall, nothing big, you know, a development in the war, but there was something big. And it's all the stuff we've talked about here. And it is that this was, that this was designed to show the humanity of the clones. This was designed to show how important and integral they were. They weren't just soldiers going in. And, and one thing I didn't talk about uh, in here that I have in my notes is, is, I feel like in this this story arc, there's a lot of casualty. You see a lot of 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 you know war death. I mean, there's the scene when when they start firing after after the the clones are coming down on the ropes and they're pan, they're panning back and you see Obi Wan deflecting and you see the clones landing behind him and then they show Mace Windu deflecting and then they show a couple clones land and just the one right in the forefront just gets blasted, it just straight back and I'm like, whoa. Oh, a little, like a little close there. And we see the same thing with some, uh, with some other fighting when they're, uh, when they're on the planet, uh, that they, they go to the techno union, we see some clone death there. And I really feel like the big takeaway from this opening story arc is it, is that Dave Filoni wanted us to, he wanted to be solid on the clones are important and they have meaning and that they are they are deeper than just soldiers and red shirts or or you know fodder in in this type. Sorry, I didn't mean to slip in a Star Trek uh, uh, reference there, That's but okay. but they're more than just pawns, I suppose right. I could say. And and I really appreciated that. The second big thing that we see here is what you just said about Anakin, and that is you know that the, the change is happening. And I don't, we don't need it in our face. We don't need it to be like, whoa, you know, there, I mean, it's, it's little bits and pieces. It's the assassination of Trench. It's his anger when he's going up against the separatists and the techno union, you know, all of those, those little hints that, 
Anakin's Anakin's transforming as well. So my grade for the story arc and and episode four, I'm going to move from that B B plus range uh, with episodes one through three because I knew something important was going to happen. I'm going to go a solid A on this for this episode of the arc for the uh, both. Oh, okay. I hadn't thought about grading the arc. I don't know if I can do that. Hmm. Because they're all they're just very different, and some were used to build to other parts, but. This episode for me is an A, for sure. And it's because of the Anakin thing. And it's not because it has to be about Anakin as the main character. It's more because I saw some psycho- psychological complexity from from Mace to Rex to the Bad Batch themselves to seeing Trench is suddenly less than just some mustache-twitching villain. And he's not necessarily... He's not complex. He's not Iago from, you know, Othello or anything like that. But... Uh, the, the the fact that he was scared of the Jedi and he sort of showed a different side of himself, I thought was important. And of course, the Anakin Skywalker uh, transformation uh, or, or the very glaring magnifying glass on his temper, his power, his control, and his his lack of patience for people he thinks are less than him. Uh, he doesn't suffer fools well, and this time he takes it as he actually murders. Yeah. If Obi Wan and Yoda were there, there would have been serious, serious repercussions. I'm sure he would have been kicked out of the order and arrested. But obviously, that did not happen. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a cup of coffee with me and for helping to spread the word about our Star Wars family we've got here at Coffee with Kenobi. To join us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, and share your Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-friendly, spoiler-free place that is also drama-free, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community and be part of the conversation, talk about this week's show, or just talk some Star Wars. It is a lot of fun, and you'll make some new friends as well as catch up with longtime friends there as well. I also want to thank all of our new and longtime members of the CWK family and let you know how much I appreciate your help and support. I love being able to give back to you with CWK Pour Over, the exclusive weekly podcast not heard anywhere else. I want to thank our CWK family members, Jason Hall, Dennis Keithley, Colby Mead, Jessica Berry, Adam Bankhurst, David Nicely, Jeff Ellis, Ross Halliban, Frank Mulder, Alexander Moylan, Aaron Harris, Chris Gavarka, Angela Sauce, Susan Gray, Connie She, Tyler Pompey, Hannah, Alex Procasio, Ian Thompson, Simbot Detradarian, Christine Turk, Kurt McKellen, Dan Ream, Brian Harding, Blake Weaver, Jim Capron, Caroline Maselli, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Brian McKinney, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. If you want to be an exclusive member of our CWK family, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash support. It's a great way to help support and help out the show, and 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital to support the incredibly important work they are doing to help these brave children and their families. In addition to being a part of the community on Facebook, Please don't forget to visit our website at www.coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, videos, and so much more. If you have a question for me or just want to share your thoughts on the air, feel free to email me at danzy at coffeewithkenobi.com and I'll share them on the show. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Zer, M-R-Z-E-H-R. There are also a lot more ways to connect with me and Coffee with Kenobi on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi and check us out on Pinterest. You can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network, and you can find my writing on CWK's website as well as starwars.com and on IGN. And if you are considering starting a podcast or a blog, let me know how I can help you get started and help you make your creative vision a reality. Be sure to check out danzymedia.com and we can get the process started. I am also available to come to your school, conference, business, or organization to talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. I want to inspire you to be inspired. 
don't be afraid to take that first step into a larger world. Thanks as always to our CWK sponsors, especially MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, our travel partner and your one-stop shop for all things Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Lines, or anywhere on the planet that you want to go on vacation. Please go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel to book your magical vacation and help support Coffee with Kenobi in the process. If you like the show, please tweet out that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. And if the force is especially with you, please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes or Google Podcasts. Every review makes a huge difference and helps spread the word. Hmm. So a very, very powerful episode, Tom. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about it here on yeah, exactly. right, on Coffee with Kenobi slash CWK today. I'm not really sure I'm going to transition the naming here because I'm not changing the name of the podcast. But it is fun doing this with you. If, if people want to um, chat with you, Tom, where can they continue the conversation with you? Oh, absolutely. You can uh, you can catch me on Twitter at DraftLine, D-R-A-F-T-L-I-N-E, or you can drop me a note through email, TomG at CoffeeWithKenobi.com. Very good. Well, hey, thanks again, buddy, for being on. Oh, you bet. My pleasure. Any, any last minute parting thoughts or words of wisdom for us? Uh, well, first of all, I can't wait for Friday to see what the new story arc for uh, – for season seven is i guess that's my biggest thing that's on my mind right now i love it i love it <laughs> this podcast is not endorsed by the walt disney company or lucasfilm limited it is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only the official star wars website can be found at www.starwars.com star wars all names sounds and any other star wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders all original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of coffee with kenobi unless otherwise indicated this is the podcast you're looking for no one here. Move along. Move along. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio, featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies. Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. With stories from your favorite Star Wars movies, television shows, and comics, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening now wherever audiobooks are sold. <laughs>